Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back to our second part of uh, our class uh, regarding uh, nuclear energy. Uh, today is going to be quite an exciting day because uh, we are going to finish this chapter. Although we're not actually finishing the entire syllabus, uh, but uh, this is probably the first time that uh, I actually finished three chapters of uh, Form 5 Physics uh, before the first semester is over. Uh. So I'm quite happy. Uh, although, yeah, la, we have kind of a lot of problems uh, along along the way because of the because of the movement control order and everything. But it's okay. Uh, let's look at everything positively. Okay, uh, we have given given uh, some extra time to prepare for SPM. Uh, so let's not waste uh, that opportunity that's given to us, la. Okay, so I'm going to start with. Um, I'm going to start by sharing uh, the screen, okay, the our PowerPoint for today, yeah? sorry. Okay, so, so far, we've been talking about uh, radioactivity. Okay, so far, we've been talking about radioactivity. Oh, hold on, uh, let me just try again. Okay, so far, we've been talking about this entire part of radioactivity. We talked about the nucleus of the atom. <clears throat> then uh, we went on to talk about the three types of radioactive decay, what the radioactive detectors are. And then, of course, we talked about half-life as well. And we did the calculations for half-life. And then after that, we spent some time talking about the uses of radioisotopes. And then uh, in our previous class, we started talking about nuclear energy. Okay, and there are two types of uh, reactions. Uh, that uh, that produce nuclear energy, uh, which is nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. Okay, and we also learn uh, Einstein's uh, principle of conservation of mass energy. Okay, in which uh, there is whenever a reaction happens, there is going to be a small loss of mass. Okay, which we call uh, uh, yeah, the loss of mass. Okay, and the loss of mass is the one that produce is called that causes the nuclear energy to be released okay and we of course after that we also learned the infamous formula lah, which is uh, e equals to mc squared okay uh, it's probably einstein's one of okay einstein's most famous formulas and we also learned how to calculate lah, from atomic mass unit okay two kilogram and then only we use it to count the energy remember uh, the three-step process to count energy First, count the loss of mass in uh, <coughs> in uh, AMU, okay, which is the atomic mass unit, and you need to take all the decimal places, okay. Don't round off anything. Secondly, convert that loss of mass into kilograms, okay. You multiply by one point six six times ten to the power of negative twenty seven, okay. And then finally, you use this formula E equals to mc squared. C is a constant because it's the speed of light. It's three times ten to the power of eight. Uh, meters per second okay and then when we finally get our energy usually it is the same as all other energies lah. okay it is uh, in the unit of joules okay but sometimes uh, some people they like to use uh, in terms of nuclear energy yeah, we also use electron volt which is EV lah. okay but uh, in usual cases usually we will use joules lah. okay so today yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, a very important use uh, okay, of nuclear energy, okay, which is we're going to talk about this thing. Uh, okay, this thing is a pretty famous picture. Okay, uh, if you see these towers, uh, okay, this is what we call a cooling tower. Uh, okay, a cooling tower and it usually is very highly associated uh, with this, uh, with this uh, place or with this thing uh, okay, that is called a nuclear reactor. Okay, we use uh, the world, okay, in the world, people use nuclear reactors to generate electrical energy. Okay, so we, we, what we do is we actually gather all the nuclear energy from either one of these reactions and usually it's nuclear fission because as we studied before, nuclear fission, uh, we can have a chain reaction from nuclear fission. Okay, so the chain reaction always produces a lot of energy and the energy, uh, kita kumpul the energy and change it or convert it uh, okay, into nuclear energy in this place called the nuclear reactor. Okay, and this is a, what we call a cooling tower uh, because remember the energy, uh, there's a lot of heat energy involved. So we need all this tempat-tempat uh, untuk menyejuk. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, I don't know why it's called Malay. I don't think it's called Tiang Penyejuk. Lah. But I know in English it's called Cooling Tower. Lah. Menara. Menara Penyejuk. Lah. I don't know. But the, the main point of it is it's supposed to cool down something. Lah. Okay. So what is it supposed to cool down? Uh, we will talk about in a while. Okay. So basically, uh, this is a setup of a nuclear reactor. Okay. This is the nuclear reactor part. And then this is the steam generator part. Lah. Okay. And it's going... And what... Inside here, okay, inside this thing which I'm showing uh, with the with the arrow over here, okay, this is the nuclear reactor part. So the nuclear process, sorry, the nuclear reaction happens here and it's usually by fission, lah, okay, as you can see uh, uh, over here, okay, the energy released by fission reactors. Okay, so fission reaction. So over here, there's a lot of nuclear fission that's happening. And we've learned the other day that whenever there's nuclear fission, there's going to be a release of energy. Okay, so the release of energy uh, does this. Lah. Okay, it changes water into steam. Okay, because the energy is released now in form of heat energy. So it produces steam and then it goes into this thing called a turbine. Okay, and then uh, actually what happens after the turbine is something that you're supposed to learn in chapter 3. Okay, but for us, we haven't learned chapter 3 yet. Lah. So, uh, we will not talk so much about it today. But I want to focus on this part. Lah. Okay, just know that, okay, just for now, ah, just ketahui bahawa the steam yang terhasil akan memusingkan this thing called the turbine. Turbine is a very big kipas. Lah. Okay, so the turbine itu, bila dia berpusing, dia akan menghasilkan, it's going to produce electrical energy. For now, let's just leave it at that. How does it produce electrical energy? We will learn when we go into chapter 3. Okay, but my main focus uh, is this part. Okay, is what is inside a nuclear reactor. Okay, so you have all these things, uh, no fuel rod, graphite moderator, pressure vessel, radiation shielding, blah, 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 blah. Okay, there's a whole lot of stuff. And in the next slide, every single component, okay, is explained to you. Okay. So what is the purpose of the graphite moderator? What is the purpose of the concrete shield? What is the purpose of the coil and uh, magnet? What is the purpose of the uranium fuel rod? Yada, yada. Okay, there's a lot of reading uh, to go on here. And uh, in chapter 5, uh, this is considered one of, this is considered another very important uh, subtopic. Lah. Okay, it doesn't look like much. Lah. Okay, it doesn't look like there's much to understand because there's not really that much calculation. But you need to know. Okay, this is a very important technology. Lah, regardless of whether you believe in uh, whether we should use nuclear energy. Yeah? Like in our country, our country decides not to uh, invest in nuclear energy. But some countries uh, like Japan, okay, Japan relies very heavily on nuclear reactors to produce their... Uh, to produce their their electrical energy okay so it's important for us to know this technology you know because who knows in the future okay things will change and we will you know we may decide to have uh, a nuclear reactor in our country or maybe in the future if you go to work you may be working in a nuclear facility itself you know so it helps to know okay what actually goes inside a nuclear uh, reactor if it is used to produce electricity uh, when I went to the Malaysian Nuclear Agency, we have a nuclear agency in Malaysia. When I went there, uh, I was uh, surprised lah, okay, and also interested to know that actually uh, in our country, there is a reactor. Okay, but the reactor is not used uh, to produce electricity. Lah, okay, the reactor is actually used to produce neutrons. Okay, just remember, bila fission berlaku, when fission happens, there is always a release of three neutrons. Okay, so... I was interested to, I mean, it was interesting to know uh, that in our in our country, we actually have small reactors. Lah. Okay, not as small as my hand like this, lah, but compared to the nuclear facility, uh, it's pretty small. Lah. Okay, but the function of the reactor is just to produce neutrons, which is then used uh, to for other uh, for other scientific purposes, lah. okay, like medical purposes, industrial purposes. So the neutrons are uh, somehow they gather. And then they send it over to you know the medical facilities for research. Okay, so actually in our country there is a nuclear reactor. Okay, it's just uh, small. Uh, okay, uh, it's not big enough uh, to generate electricity. It's just good enough to produce neutrons for research purposes. Okay, but today uh, what we need to talk about is 
as I said, lah, we need to talk about what's inside this reactor. Okay, and instead of talking about all of this, okay, and all these processes, because it involves a lot of reading, lah, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a few uh, people, okay, to help me to uh, explain, okay, to explain what is this uh, nuclear reactor, what is inside the nuclear reactor. Uh, they are going to help me to explain okay uh, as you know uh, we have been working on this project since last year uh, and i have always uh, wanted uh, for this project uh, to be to be to be displayed lah. okay to be displayed uh, <clears throat> and to be presented somehow <laughs> okay uh, using uh, you know using our classes or whatever lah. so i had always wanted them uh, to present this thing uh, that they have done uh, in a class so today we're going to be listening to them okay uh so i'm going to call them in uh, okay they are uh, jeremy nigel and uh, harris okay uh hi guys <laughs> okay so uh, these people are going to help me today uh to talk about uh the nuclear reactor okay what goes on inside the nuclear reactor and uh the components in the nuclear reactor so for those of you who are following our stream uh, uh, please listen carefully, okay, to what they have to say. Uh, it's pretty long, okay, I know it's pretty long, but uh, I hope it is uh, interesting and uh, exciting, just as I'm very excited to listen to them. Um, but do uh, lend them your ears, okay, and uh, as always, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, write it down in the live chat, okay, and then we will try to answer uh, when they are finished with their explanation. Okay, so uh, over to you guys uh all the best hi <laughs> hi okay let's start the um uh, what do we call this uh teaching now we are we're what That's okay we're going to teach you we're going to present about nuclear reactor how it produced the electrical energy for today. So me and my team, Nigel, Harris, and me, are going to explain all about the nuclear reactor for today. So before I start, I'm going to give a short introduction about what's going on. So for a long time, humans have actually thought that energy and mass is not related in any way. But we know that that's not really the case. Because a few decades ago, a brilliant guy called Einstein discovered that mass and energy somehow are related. The thing that he found out was famously described in the famous equation E equal mc squared, that matter that have mass can be converted into energy. And by that means, humans can now harness the energy inside the atom for their own use. And the way they did it is by using something called nuclear reactor. So in, this, in the previous part, you have learned that a radioisotopes or radioactive atom will decay and gives out energy. That's basically the energy that is harnessed inside the nuclear reactor. So in today's segment, me and my team decided to explain how a nuclear reactor works. Um, so just keep in mind, we are just a 17 years old kid, just like you guys, who barely mastered anything in the topic of nuclear physics. But we did some research and hopefully we can teach this topic with ease. So right now I'm going to pass this time to my friend Harris, is going to explain how you can access the teaching tool that we have created. Harris, over to you. Thank you, Jeremy, for the introduction. Uh, hi, guys. Assalamualaikum. Good morning. Today, I'm going to teach you guys how to download the map and use it. So first, you should go to our website, which is gg.gg slash neib reactor. After that, you go to the nuclear reactor section. You click the arrow, and you click how to access the NIB reactor. After that, you should scroll scroll down, and there will be two download buttons. One is for the educational edition, and one is for the pocket edition. If you are using your laptop, your PC, or anything selling your phones, you should click the education edition. And if you're using your mobile devices, you should click the download link for the pocket edition one. Okay, after you click download, I'm going to give you an example. For me, I'm using my education edition. So after clicking this, just drag it to anywhere. You put the file anywhere you feel comfortable. 
for me i put it in on my desktop when you download it it will be a zip file so what you need to do is you should rename it you should just delete the dot Ooh. uh you should just delete the dot zip and just leave the dot mc world it will change into a file that can be imported into your minecraft okay after that open up your minecraft education edition sign in using the account that the government has gave you which was the moe one after that click play click import and just select the world that you just downloaded you have successfully imported it now you just need to access the world okay jeremy i'm going to pass it back to you okay thank you harris for the good explanation so friends we gladly present to you our own teaching tool for the nuclear power plant segment. It's basically an entire nuclear power plant built inside the game called Minecraft. Now, right off the bat, when you enter the world, you will notice that the giant cooling tower, like this that you just have saw earlier from the previous slide, are nowhere to be seen. That's because we choose not to add it into our design. Another thing you might notice is we are on an island. Well, that also will be explained soon. So we actually did not follow the usual design of a nuclear power plant that you might have seen in movies or TV shows. We actually follow what's called a SMR nuclear reactor design, which stands for small modular reactor. It is literally self-explanatory self and it's a small nuclear reactor. So our component and everything are located below ground. This is to save spaces, and if an accident may happen, we just explode the ground on top and bury the nuclear reactor. Of course, there's a joke. Huh? <laughs> so, now, before I explain the rest of the generation energy part, I would like you to ask yourself, what's the first picture to pop up of your head when you think about nuclear? Well, of course, most of you will think about nuclear bombs, um, I don't really blame you because that's basically what we are learning today, but with just a little twist. Now moving on, upon entering the reactor building, you'll notice a lot of buttons. The gray but color button and the brown color button is just basically a few sort of computer, if you will, and it tells you stuff and acts as a tour guide during the learning process. But I won't be using that tour guide for today. I will be explaining it to you manually because what's because that's the point of me doing the explanation. So right here, we have the button to enter the reactor core itself. We will be getting into that later. But for now, let me show you what is the key component for a working nuclear power plant. So let's um, uh, go to the component and everything. OK, so just like a normal power plant, it needed a place to generate energy. Here, we have a reactor core. After the reactor core, we have the steam generator. And after that, we have turbine. And after turbine, we have the generator. And finally, we have the step-up transformer. Now, keep in mind, all of these components are very essential for every power plant to work. OK, move on. We will start again by learning how the energy inside the atom is harnessed. Have a guess. What's the process that involved? Redstone. Wina, kenapa nih? I think the redstone is broken. Yap, yap, yap. Error. Sorry, guys. So have a guess, huh? what's, what's the process that involved in the harness of energy inside atom? So I bet this looks familiar. It's actually the radioactive decay process by which this structure can also represent nuclear fission. Now, nuclear fission, as you all have learned previously, is just the splitting of atom, which in the process releases energy. And where did the energy come from? It's actually the result of what we call mass defect after the splitting of atom. 
basically what it means is after a fission reaction, the daughter atom, after the fission reaction, when add up together, the mass won't be exactly equal to the parent atom. And where did the lost mass go? It's actually converted into energy, heat energy to be precise. Now, this particular fission reaction only happens if a fast-moving neutron is bombarded to the radioisotopes. And after that, the atom will split into more stable atoms and in the process releases a ton amount of energy as heat. Later, you will see why this particular way of generating energy is amazing and scary at the same time. So, we have here a radioisotopes. Mainly, we use what's called uranium. So it's represented by the yellow color blocks. And the nuclear fission is started by bombarding the uranium with fast moving neutron and causes the unstable uranium to split into other more stable atoms, which in that reaction also emit huge heat energy. It is due to the lost mass or mass defect. Basically, Uranium atom, which then trigger the splitting of nearby atom, which then repeated the process. Now, what you have here is actually what we call chain reaction. Well, you might ask, wouldn't that mean like a nuclear bomb? Essentially, it is. That's basically how a nuclear bomb works. But there's this particular kind of magic rod that will that can calm the reaction. And with that, I would also like you to ask yourself a question: What will happen if the fission reaction become uncontrollable? And with that said. I'll invite my friend Nigel to explain the key component, a few key components inside the reactor, nuclear power plant reactor. Okay, Nigel, I'll pass this time to you. So, hi, good morning, everyone. So, first and foremost, we are going to explore the first and probably the most important component in the reactor, the nuclear reactor core. Now, pay attention, because this is how the energy is generated. So, we have a few. As for now, we use a radioisotope called uranium. There is also another kind of radioisotope that's still in research, that is thorium. Now, we have a uranium or thorium fuel rod inside the nuclear reactor core. Now, the way nuclear fission reaction is, by making the unstable uranium be split by a fast-moving neutron, and when the neutron collide with the uranium atom in the rod, it will spontaneously trigger a fission reaction. And about fission reaction, it will trigger more atoms to split in a chain. You can imagine a huge ton of heat energy building up. A rod called boron control rod functions to control the fission reaction. Now, how it works is that fission release neutron. Well, this particular rod absorb the neutron, which means less neutron will be in the system, and thus less neutron collide with the uranium atom, hence less fission reaction. Now, water is filled up inside the nuclear reactor core to prevent overheating and to serve as a heat conductor. Now, there is this certain type of liquid that is usually used in nuclear reactor as the moderator is what we call heavy water, which works by slowing down the high kinetic energy of the neutron. When the energy is lowered, the reactivity is slowed down. Hence, the building up, the heat building up in the reaction is decreased. Now you know what's happening inside the reactor core. Let's take a long walk outside the core. And if you notice, inside the core is a white wall which essentially we try to recreate it as steel and outside the core is just concrete. But both of this wall is important so that no gamma radiation is leaked out and killing the nuclear reactor workers. Next, now we have understand how heat energy is generated. We should take a look on how heat energy is converted to electrical energy. Since heat energy is already produced, heat energy is then used to boil the water into steam. And that process undergo inside the component we call steam generator. A huge amount of steam is produced. Then the steam is compressed. 
now possess high kinetic energy. The energy of the steam plays a part for the next process which we are going next. This is the turbine. So, remember previously that the steam possess high energy. Steam is used to drive the turbine, so the turbine will turn with a high velocity. This is what we thought the turbine might look like if it were going to build inside Minecraft. Obviously, we cannot copy it entirely like in real life, but as long as it serves its purpose to turn, then it's fine. Now remember, all of this process is important for the next component to work. In this case right now, we have a turbine getting its kinetic energy from the steam and thus turns the turbine. So now I pass this time to Jeremy back. Thank you. Okay, thank you Nigel for the good explanation. So right now I'm going to continue about explaining how the electrical energy is produced. Okay, so this is where we get our price. Can you guess why? We have here a generator, which essentially how it works is the spinning of the turbine previously provide the essential kinetic energy for the magnet to be rotated or spin around the coil. Well, for now, you might be so confused. What's magnet have to do with the generation of electricity? Hold on, I'm going to explain it in just a bit. So the generation of electrical current in any power plant is based on what we call electromagnetic induction. You might get even more confused. Well, don't worry. You will all learn this in chapter three, electromagnetism. So I won't bother to, ex to explain the whole chapter to you, but essentially how it works is the electrical current is generated with magnetic field. Well, of course, that's not a full explanation about electromagnetic induction, but my main aim here is to teach about nuclear reactor and not about electromagnetic induction. So let's look to the next component. Now, just to recap the whole thing, we had a control nuclear bomb that is undergoing control nuclear fission, which produces heat, and the heat is used to heat up the water. The water becomes steam, steam drive turbine, and finally, turbine drive generator. But there's one problem. The lights at the city still isn't on. Well, that's because we haven't reached the transmission of electricity. So I have here my amazing friend again, Nigel. He's going to explain the transmission part and why you should be thankful about this knowledge that you might that you just have gained. Nigel, over to you. Thank you. So hi, once again. So we got another section to talk about, the transmission section. I will try to keep this part short, and hopefully after this section, you'll be able to apply your job at SCSB. So right after the electricity is produced, we wanted a way that we can transfer and transmit the electrical current. But that's a bit of a catch. We are at a stranded island far away from the mainland and the city. For sure, electrical energy will be lost when you reach the mainland. And where is our cable anyway? The two question is exactly what I'm going to answer now. So there is this problem that if we transmit an electrical current for a long journey, only tiny, only tiny of the current will make it and the rest will be converted into heat energy. Now, how do we fix that? Well, we have to increase something. We have to increase the potential difference that is the voltage. It can be done by using a fairly clever component we call a step-up transformer. Now, how the step-up transformer works is basically by the same principle that was used in the generator, electromagnetic induction. The secondary coil has more turns than the primary coil, which causes the voltage to increase. There you go, but remember, there was another problem. Where is our cable? Since we are on a stranded island far away from mainland, we decided to go with a rather fascinating design that is to put our cable down there in the ocean. It's called a submarine cable. This is what the submarine cable looks like. Beautiful, isn't it? It is far more practical since we are far away 
and all that around us is water. Now, since you know all this, you can work. You can now apply your job at SASB. <laughs> now I pass this time back to Jeremy. Okay, thank you, Nigel. Again, so upon reaching the mainland, the electrical current that just now have been transmitted from the cable cannot be directly linked to the house and building. The electrical power needed to be lowered be before being distributed to the building and houses. And that's the job of the substation which you are looking at right now. Now, congratulations, all of you have reached the final part of the segment. Right now, we'll let you admire the knowledge that you just have gained by showing you the view of the city. <clears throat> Shout out to Tong and Luther for helping us to build. Oh, Whoa. Okay, Angel. Up, up. So, there is one more thing I forgot to talk about. Why the nuclear reactor is built on an island. If you may, you, you realize that. So we built on an island is because when something happened, like a malfunction or explosion happened, it will be far away from the city. Remember, there will be effect, but the effect will be less. And the effect will be less towards the people and other living things near the explosion. Okay. So with that said, we should all appreciate the knowledge that we just gained and use it wisely only for the greater good of others. With that said, remember the question I asked you guys earlier? What will happen if the fission reaction become uncontrollable? Well, I'm going to leave you with this to answer the question. Aris, go ahead. Nah. On got what? Oh Dramatic. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> thank you, Lajar. Okay, thank you for listening to our rather um, fascinating presentation hopefully you learned something new today and thank you again thank you thank you guys okay thanks everyone uh thanks guys for uh, helping us with this uh yeah so that's uh that was our project uh, that uh, there were seven people there were seven of us uh seven students okay uh and myself we were working on it uh, since last year uh and uh yeah, if I could see you all now, I would probably ask you to give them a round of applause, but it's okay. I'm sure you're clapping uh, wherever you are. <laughs> okay, so uh, so thanks, uh, guys, for explaining to us uh, what happens, uh, what are the key components in a nuclear reactor. Okay, I'm just going to... Uh, to so basically, what they have done uh, is they have explained everything. Uh, okay, everything over here okay, has been explained to you. Uh, you know, every key component. But as I said, lah, um, what they did in their project is they tried to place every single component uh, as how they would imagine a nuclear reactor to be. Okay, I'm not saying that their design is wrong and neither am I saying that this design is wrong either. Okay, but it's just that, you know, different people will have different design. Okay, and these guys, what they have done is they have come up with their own design uh, and they have decided to put every single component separately. Lah. Okay, this one, uh, it all looks like it's all together. Uh, okay, but actually it's also separate. Okay, so uh, I appreciate the hard work that has been uh, put in, okay, into creating such a world. Uh, and I also want to say that uh, besides Jeremy, Harris, and Nigel, uh, we also have to give credit uh, to two other builders. Okay, one is uh, Tong, and then uh, the other one is Luther. They also helped uh, in building uh, this world. Uh, and also a very big shout out to uh, Sprenza and also uh, Faizatul Azhar for uh, helping us uh, also with the promotion uh, of this 
uh, of this world and also coming up with all the, the interesting graphics uh, for all the videos and everything. Lah. Okay, so back to the reactor. This is the basic process. Lah, okay, and I think Jeremy also mentioned it very uh, well just now. First of all, you have the nuclear reaction. That is a must. Okay, if you're going to have a nuclear reactor, you must have nuclear reaction. So the nuclear reaction, okay, will heat up, will produce heat energy that heats up a gas that after that uh, heats up water. Okay, this part, okay, was not mentioned in uh, the reactor just now, uh, okay, because their version of the reactor is slightly different. This is another version of the reactor, okay, uh, in which they heat up the gas and the gas heats up the water. Okay, but essentially the process is still the same. From the nuclear reaction, okay, you have all this heat energy that is used to heat up the water so that the water becomes steam. The steam that is very hot, okay, and has high velocity, yeah, will turn the turbine, okay, and then the turbine will turn the coil in the generator and it produces electricity. How it is produced electricity, we will discuss when we go into chapter three. Okay, for now, in chapter five, let's talk, we are focusing on this part. Okay, uh, and of course the cooling tower, okay, the cooling tower is used to cool down, uh, you know, the entire process lah, because we don't want it to overheat, okay. And uh, another way to stop it from overheating or to stop the reactivity from going out of control, okay, is as uh, was mentioned just now, uh, is by using the control rod. Okay, the control rod that was uh, introduced in the reactor just now that you saw, okay, is boron. But there could be another kind of control rod, which is also called cadmium. Okay, and how they control, what actually they control, was also explained just now. Huh? Okay, it, it is controlled by absorbing the neutrons. We don't want too many neutrons to be, you know, to be doing the chain reaction. So we control the number of neutrons so that they don't go and bombard the rest of the uranium or the thorium. Huh? Okay, the thorium uh, also is enough. But actually, for our physics on five, we actually focus more on uranium because uh, nowadays uranium no no sorry not nowadays lah. since the beginning uh, uranium has been you know used uh, a lot uh, in many many uh, nuclear facilities lah. okay but uh, as Nigel mentioned just now uh, that uh, actually they are researching on another kind of material which is called which is called thorium okay T H O R I U M uh, yeah from the word thor lah. Okay, but uh, thorium, uh, okay, uh, apparently, I, I will show you, I will post up a video later in the Google Classroom. Uh, actually, thorium, uh, there are more benefits to using thorium, okay, but it is still under research, uh, you know, as to whether it is actually more useful or whether it's actually better to use thorium than uranium. Okay, but there are scientists who believe that, you know, thorium is uh, still better, uh, it has a lot of more benefits uh, compared to uranium. Okay, and you can watch the video when I post it in the Google Classroom later. Lah. Okay, so that's it uh, about the nuclear reactor. Okay, uh, if there's anything that you don't understand, uh, you know, you can always re-watch the video again or you can, uh, you can ask, you can ask me uh, or you can ask your questions uh, in the live chat uh, at the bottom. Lah. Okay, now, just now uh, the presentation ended uh, with a very important question. Lah. Okay, what happens uh, if the control rod uh, ceases to function? Okay, or in the case just now, what Harris did was he actually destroyed the, the control rod uh, to show uh, that the reaction uh, is uncontrollable. And if the reaction is uncontrollable, you're going to have all these neutrons uh, that are going to be hitting the uraniums at an uncontrolled rate, okay, which causes the, the explosion that you saw just now to happen. Uh. Okay, pretty dramatic, uh, but it's a good reminder for us. Uh, that we need some form of control. Okay, there is a small partner uh, that we all have to play uh, in order to make sure that the nuclear reactor does what it is supposed to do without presenting any danger to, uh, to the people that are supposed to benefit from it. Lah. Okay, so uh, I will talk about that in a while, but let's talk about this one. Lah. We, need to talk, we need to know what are the advantages lah, and the disadvantages of using nuclear fission. Okay, so nuclear power costs about the same as coal. Okay, so it's not that expensive. Okay, but the good thing is it does not produce smoke or carbon dioxide. As compared to coal, uh, most of our power plants is, you know, they use coal. Uh, okay, bahan api, uh, arang batu. Uh, okay, so it does not contribute to the greenhouse effect. Okay, and as you know, uh, greenhouse effect, uh, you know, the 
carbon dioxide and smoke and actually you know water okay also uh, also is a contributor okay to the greenhouse gases it produces less waste okay another benefit of nuclear power is actually it produces less waste okay and this is the probably the biggest uh, this one uh, it produces huge amounts of energy uh, from small amount of fuel the amount of energy that you can that you can produce uh, from let's say uh, one kilogram of uranium and one kilogram of coal uh, one kilogram of uranium uh, is able to produce so much more energy okay as we calculated on the previous class uh, actually the amount of energy that you generate now uh, from nuclear power is very very high although we calculate it and it's just like darab sepuluh kuasa negative berapa berapa bahkan but when you combine it all uh, all the atoms inside uh, it produces a lot more energy okay than coal or any other uh any other bahan api uh, can uh, produce number four nuclear power stations need less fuel okay than stations because of this lah because of number three okay there's a lot of nuclear fuel in the world yes i know okay whenever we listen to the words nuclear fuel uh, the first thing we think about is the oh it's dangerous it's dangerous okay it's only dangerous uh, if we misuse it okay just like any other thing in this world uh, if we misuse something then it becomes dangerous but and actually in and of in and of itself okay it is actually very useful okay it is far more uh, advantages than disadvantages uh. Safety procedures in the administration of nuclear reactors are very advanced and very safe. I had the opportunity once uh, to go and visit a nuclear power plant uh, in Japan. And let me tell you, I am a testament, and this is a testimony. Lah. Okay, the safety procedures that they take uh, in the Japanese power plant okay, is actually very, very advanced. Okay, and, and it's very, very safe. I went there and uh, you know I felt totally safe. You know, they made sure that all of us, you know, there were places that we couldn't go, obviously, but there were places that, you know, we could also see, you know. So I saw, okay, uh, I you know we saw uh, how the cooling tower was, you know, what the reactor looks like, what it, what goes in. Uh, we even saw the control rods, okay, from a distance, obviously from a distance, okay, because we were visitors. Uh. Okay, so, the, you know, if everybody adheres uh, to the safety procedures, okay, it is actually very safe, okay. Nuclear fission also produces useful radioisotopes as byproducts that can be used in industry, medicine, agriculture, and research. And this is the thing that our nuclear reactor in Malaysia, that's what we do. Okay, the nuclear reactor that is found in the Malaysian Nuclear Agency does this. It doesn't provide power, okay, but it just product, produces radioisotopes as byproducts. You know, uh, like after the uranium, they're tabalak, bahkan. Okay, after they, they split, it becomes these small radioisotopes. Okay, the one example we saw in the day is uranium. When it splits into two, one is krypton and one is, uh, I can't remember, barium. Okay, and these are, you know, byproducts uh, that can be used for industry. Okay, besides the neutrons, uh, the neutrons also can be used uh, for research purposes. Okay, so uh, many, many, you know, uh, advantages. Uh. So even now when you're using nuclear fission uh, in a nuclear reactor to produce energy, Besides producing energy, uh, you're also producing byproducts that are actually helpful to other areas of research. Okay, uh, in I will show you the video uh, in you uh, in the Google Classroom that shows another kind of similar facility uh, uh, in uh, MIT. Okay, in America. Okay, but of course uh, we also have to make we also have to talk about what the disadvantages are. Uh, okay, whenever we talk about nuclear fission, uh, we have to talk about what the disadvantages are first of all the cost is very high this is definite okay because there's a lot of you know safety procedures involved okay so obviously it's going to cost pretty high lah. okay and then this is undeniable lah. there is always a risk of accidents okay if a chain reaction goes out of control as you saw just now that could be explosion and there could be leakage okay or large amounts of radioactivity uh, sorry radioactive substance uh, may be leaked out Okay, which is what happened in the 2011 uh, earthquake uh, in uh, Fukushima, okay, in Japan. Because of the earthquake, okay, the reactor core was shaken, and because of that, they couldn't control uh, the reaction rate, okay, which caused the uh, entire uh, nuclear facility to, to shut down. But, be, but after they shut down, you know, they found that there was a lot of radioactivity in the air. 
there's always a risk of that happening. Okay, we cannot deny that. Okay, number three, uh, the few rods uh, that we use, okay, all the uranium rods uh, okay, that is used uh, are very hot and highly radioactive with very long half-lives. Okay, uh, and these few rods uh, were not really mentioned uh, in, the, in the reactor you saw just now because in the reactor that they did in Minecraft, the few rods are uh, they represented it with these few blocks. Okay, the yellow one was uranium and the green one was thorium. Uh. But in a nuclear reactor, okay, this is the fuel rod. Okay, the fuel rod is where this is all this is all uranium, uh. okay, uranium, uranium, or thorium, uh, depending on what you want. Okay, and then the reaction happens over here. So these fuel rods are uh, unfortunately they have very long half-life. Okay, if they have very long half-life means it is good and bad at the same time. It is good because they boleh tahan lama. But it is also not good because if something happens, okay, it is very hard for it to decay very fast. Okay, it takes a very long time for it to decay. So the radioactivity is going to last for a long time. Number four, the procedure to cool down the rods is very expensive. Okay, if you want to cool down this one, it's very expensive. Lah. Okay, but nowadays, as in the as in the presentation we saw just now, uh, we find that a lot of uh, nuclear reactors are built on islands. Okay, or are built uh, near sources of water. You don't build a nuclear reactor in the middle of the forest. Okay, because it's not cost, uh, it is not cost effective. Lah. Okay, so we use the sea, eh? we use the sea or we use uh, you know pools of water uh, to cool down in order to cut costs. Okay, if you build a nuclear reactor in the middle of the forest, uh, then you've got another cost coming in. Uh. You have to figure out how to you know pump in water. Uh, so that you can cool down the control, uh, you can cool down the, the reactor. Okay, so that's why you find that actually a lot of uh, nuclear reactors, they are built next to the sea, you know, or next to very big bodies of water, so that they can use the water to cool down uh, the reactor. Number five, the hot water discharge from the nuclear power stations can cause thermal pollution. Okay, uh, this is, here I can increase the temperature, okay, which, uh, it's actually not very good, lah, especially if you're living uh, very near to the reactor. Okay, which is also another reason, as Nigel pointed out just now, which is also another reason why they chose to build the reactor far away from the mainland. Okay, uh, it is less expensive lah, if they were to build the reactor and the mainland next to each other. Because they just provide. Lah. Okay, but it is not that safe lah, because of all these pollution probabilities. Okay, there's a radioactive leakage, there's thermal pollution. Okay, and then of course, one other disadvantage should be people who work in a nuclear power station and those living nearby may be exposed to excessive radiation. Uh, this one cannot be helped. Lah. Okay, excessive. Lah. I'm not saying that they may be exposed to radiation. Everyone is exposed to some form of radiation. If you, if you remember the day we were talking about background radiation, right? Every day you go out in the sun, you're going to be exposed to some form of radiation. Okay, so don't say that, oh, okay, I'm safe because we don't have, you know, we all are going to be exposed to some radiation. Okay, it's just that people who work in nuclear power stations, they have more exposure to, you know, extra radiation because of uh, the radioactive material that is being used in the reactor. Okay, so these advantages and disadvantages uh, are things that people consider. Okay, benda yang orang pertimbangkan uh, uh, when they have to decide uh, whether to build a nuclear reactor or not. Okay, our country, okay, Malaysia, we have decided not to build a nuclear power plant. Lah. Okay, the only thing we have is a nuclear reactor, uh, but it is only used for research purposes. But as I said, who knows, in the future, maybe our leaders will decide that we need a more cost-effective method. Okay, so uh, that is something to think about in the future. Maybe when you guys grow up, you know, uh, you could fight for the advantages cost. I don't know. Okay, I think if we were, if we were to take a poll in the class, after you learn about the advantages and disadvantages, okay, it is always a good thing to ask yourself, you know, we cannot deny that nuclear power, okay, is a very good form of technology. But after you consider all the advantages and disadvantages, after having learned all this, huh, where do you stand? Okay, are you for nuclear power plants or are you against nuclear power plants? And it's okay. It's okay not to be not to have the same answer. Okay, 
maybe you can post your comments in the live chat and uh, see whether you're for or you're against and then i will count you know and then we will take a poll uh, okay so five as to are we for or are we against uh you know nuclear power plants okay this last part uh i am going to talk about this but i'm also going to share this uh, slide with you all because you uh, we need to know this uh, okay it's not enough uh, to know about the advantages and disadvantages but we also need to know what are actually the safety procedures okay that have uh, that have been taken uh, to manage radioactive substances this one we need to know okay you need to must it out because otherwise you know all learning about all this radioactivity uh, has no meaning okay so what are the sources of background radiation? Okay, so number one, uh, one percent is nuclear leaks and fallout. Very, very small percent. A very big percentage uh, is radioactive gases in the air. Okay, and as I said before, our bodies are always exposed to natural background radiation. Okay, if you don't believe, uh, even our food and drink uh, also got back some form of radiation. <laughs> okay so yeah i know the next time you eat your maggi or the next time you eat your samyang or whatever okay just remember everything you eat and drink okay has some form of background radiation but it is very low and it is not harmful to humans okay i just need to say this now there is always some form of radiation okay after this if you're going to eat your breakfast if you're going to eat your lunch or even as i'm having my cup of coffee yeah Okay, there is some small form of background radiation. Okay, we cannot deny this because we live in we live on Earth. We definitely are dying. Okay, but we need to talk about the negative effects. Okay, some negative effects of radioactive substances. Number one, it can cause ionization okay, to the molecules of the cells, okay, which causes the cells to be killed. Okay, this is uh, undeniable. Okay, and this one will cause tissue damage and you know, it will cause harm to our body. Okay, if we have low dose of radiation, our damaged tissues can repair itself rapidly. Which is why even though we have all these radioactive sources uh, from, you know, from, from, many, many, uh, from many, many different sources, okay, rock and soil, uh, outer space, uh, okay, all this uh, we cannot help one another. Except maybe medical examination, uh, maybe we can. Uh, but the rest of this... Uh, we cannot do anything about it, okay? We can't say, oh, stop, stop, sun, don't come into the earth because I don't want the radioactivity. That's nonsense, lah. Okay, we cannot stop the background radiation, but because the radiation doses are, are very low, so whatever tissues that are damaged, okay, for example, I can repair itself rapidly. For example, if you are doing cheerleading and you're always under the sun, definitely you're going to be exposed to a lot more radiation than the average person who is always under the umbrella. But... If anything has taught you, whenever you cannot sunburn, your sunburn will heal itself naturally, lah, most of the time. Okay, because you know we can we have the ability to uh, repair our own tissues. The only problem is this: high doses of radiation can cause burn effects known as radiation burn. Okay, it can also cause genetic damage to the molecules of the cells, uh, and this leads to the formation of cancerous cells and tumor development. Okay, a very common cause of skin cancer. Okay, if I read if I read correctly, a very common cause of skin cancer is overexposure to the sun. Okay, because overexposure to the sun uh, will cause cancerous cells in our skin and leads leads to skin cancer. If the radioactive substances get inside the body, the most harmful effects come from the alpha particles. Okay, because they have the highest ionizing power. We studied this in the second class. Okay, alpha particles have the highest ionizing power. This is able to change neutral atoms to ions uh, okay, at a very high rate. So alpha particles uh, are dangerous to us uh, okay, because they have the highest ionizing power. Although they have the lowest penetrating power, but they are able to ionize very highly. Number six, if the radioactive source is outside the body, the greatest danger comes from the gamma sources. Okay, because gamma has the highest penetrating power. So alpha di dalam badan sangat bahaya, but gamma outside, nah, okay, is very bahaya. The alpha particles can't even penetrate my baju, so not so bad lah. But if the alpha particles is inside our body, for example, if we inject, okay, a radioactive material with alpha particles inside, nah, okay, then it's pretty dangerous lah. Okay, the somatic effect, nah, somatic effect is uh, what happens to our cells lah. 
Okay, uh, appears in the person exposed to radiation. The seriousness of the damage depends on the dose of the radiation received. Okay, and uh, usually it this causes fatigue, nausea, hair loss, radiation burns, cataract, okay, or blood disorder like leukemia, organ failure, and sometimes death. Okay, genetic effect. Okay, what happens to our genes? Okay, this bahagiana is all biology. Lah. Okay, so uh, the effect of radiation, uh, it affects our reproductive cells. Okay, that's very normal and can lead to the defective of offspring in the future generations of the exposed person. Okay, which is uh, sometimes why I hear people say, don't put your phone in your pocket. <laughs> okay, I don't know whether you've heard this before, but don't put your phone in the pocket may have some merit to it. Okay, because uh, your phones, okay, your phones definitely they emit some form of radiation. And uh, when you put your phone in your pocket, uh, I don't know about you, but my pocket is pretty close to where my reproductive cells are. I hope you know what I mean by reproductive cells. Whether you're a guy or a girl, uh, your reproductive cells are usually near your pocket area. Lah. Okay, so uh, I've heard this advice quite a number of times. Uh, don't put your phone in your pocket too long or too often. Or don't even put your phone in your pocket at all. Okay, because it may affect your reproductive cells. I don't know how true this is. Uh, I have not actually researched on this, but I've heard this advice quite a number of times from different, different people. Okay, and uh, some other effects in terms of genetics are birth defects, congenital defects, premature death, means before the baby is born, already die. Uh, chromosome abnormalities, if you study this in biology, you will know that, you know, less one chromosome, extra one chromosome, okay, has different genetic effects. Okay, and then of course, it might cause cancer in later life now. I remember reading somewhere, and I don't know whether it is true, uh, that uh, one of the one of the the arguments lah, okay, one of the arguments are for increased uh, testicular and ovarian cancer uh, is the is the <laughs> is putting the handphone in your pocket lah. But I don't know how true this is lah. Okay, I don't want to go on record saying that all oh, this is very true. But I remember reading that there are some people that argue. Uh, if you put your phone in your pocket, uh, you know, especially so close to your reproductive area, okay, it, it, it may increase the, the chances of you getting testicular or, uh, or ovarian cancer. Lah. Something which I don't want to happen to you. Lah. Okay, I, have, I had a friend, lah, I think he had uh, testicular cancer when he was 18 or 19 years old. Yeah just one or two years older than you i remember he had i remember he was diagnosed with testicular cancer uh, then um, he's okay la, he's okay now um don't ask me what happened to his testicles la. okay let's not talk about that okay so what are the safety precautions needed uh, in the handling of radioactive substances okay so uh this is uh very normal uh, read and follow advice Okay, and instructions marked on radioactive substances, equipment, and work manuals. Okay, dena arahan. Okay, don't pandai pandai saja buat sendiri. Okay, it is pretty. Actually, it is pretty much the same as the safety precautions in the physics lab. Okay, listen to your teacher. Do everything with the correct procedure. Okay, uh, gloves must be worn at any time an unsealed source is being used or whenever there is contamination. Okay, I think if anything that Corona has taught us is wear gloves and wear masks more often if you can wear laboratory coats long pants and closed toe footwear okay when we when nigel and i uh, went to the malaysian nuclear agency so uh we had the opportunity to go and see the reactor as in like you know up close lah. but because nigel was underage so i was the only one that was allowed to go in lah. So, I, uh, sangat, sangat tua, so i was allowed to go in to see the inside of the reactor itself okay and uh just now in the presentation uh, nigel mentioned that the water that they use in the reactor is called heavy water lah. okay it is used as a moderator so i went in and i actually saw the heavy water itself but in order for me to go in uh, okay i had to make sure that of course number one i had to wear shoes lah. okay so thankfully i was wearing shoes that time and then number two they made sure that i had to wear long pants so i was wearing long pants but I didn't have my lab coat, so they lent me the lab coat. And the lab coat that they lent me, uh, it's not the normal lab coat that kita pakai di Makmal Sekolah. No. It's pretty heavy. La. Okay, it's pretty heavy. It's pretty big. You know, it, 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 it is uh, heavier than a normal jacket. La. 
Okay, so the lab coat that they use in a nuclear facility, every time you go near the nuclear reactor, you have to wear this lab coat. Okay, so these are all safety precautions that are usually observed uh, whenever you deal with uh, nuclear energy. Lah. Okay, obviously, eating, dry, drinking, applying cosmetics, okay, pakai makeup, ma, okay, <laughs> uh, and storing food is prohibited. Lah, okay, whenever you handle, because, you know, the chances of the radiation uh, to be you know, to be in the food itself is not good for you. Lah. Because remember, uh, if there is some radiation, uh, some high radioactive material uh, in the food, uh, then you put the food inside your mouth. Uh, if the radiation is an alpha particle, uh, then it's very dangerous to you because it's already inside your body. Now, and susah mo di keluarkan. You know, unless you go to the toilet. Uh. But while it is still inside your body, uh, the alpha particles are going to ionize the cells in your body. Which is never a good thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Other things are all work surfaces should be covered. Okay, this is normal. When using radioactive liquids, we use plastic or metal trays or uh, stainless steel. Okay, because it can be washed easily, should be utilized to contain potential spill. Okay, radioactive material, especially liquids, should be kept in unbreakable containers whenever possible. If we use glass, then we use a secondary container. Usually, uh, if we have learned this before, usually we use uh, lead containers. Lah. Okay, before eating or drinking, we wash our hands and forearms thoroughly. Okay, just like we would now in our COVID nineteen uh, season. <laughs> okay, stronger radioactive sources, as we said, should be handled with robotic control system. Okay, behind steel, concrete, lead, or thick glass panels, you shouldn't handle radioactive sources that are strong with your own bare hands. Okay. Radiation badges containing photographic film. Okay, we've talked about radiation badges in our previous class. Okay, so they wear this uh, to show whether they have been exposed to radiation. Okay, the darkness of the film shows the level of exposure to radiation. But how about the management of radioactive waste? Okay, so in a nuclear reactor, a very large amount of energy is produced from a very small amount of fuel. Okay, however, much of the waste is radioactive. Okay, and therefore must be carefully managed uh, as hazardous waste. Lah. Okay, so uh, there are a few kinds of levels of waste. One is low level, intermediate, and then a high level waste. So even the waste, lah, bahan buangan radioactive, lah, there is you know there is certain uh, levels are depending on uh, the danger it poses to other people. So low level waste is about ninety percent. Now ninety percent of the waste is about low level waste. And it's usually from hospitals, laboratories, industry, as well as the nuclear fuel cycle. Okay, it can be paper, racks, tools, clothing, filters. Okay, and usually this one we just bury in shallow landfill sites. Or sometimes we just burn it all together. Okay, so that uh, you know it doesn't pose that much danger. Intermediate level waste is about 7% of the volume. Okay. Uh, so if you have calculated now, uh, originally 90% is low level, intermediate is 7, so we are guessing that high level waste is probably about 3%. Okay, so, uh, you know, this one is uh, resins, chemical sludge, reactor components, okay, these are all intermediate level waste. Uh. So some are buried, okay, and uh, some mainly used to waste, oh, sorry, okay, yeah, some are buried, uh. Okay, and then some are buried even deeper underground. Okay, short lived lah. Okay, from reactors usually is buried. From reprocessing is usually disposed deeper underground. Okay, which is why one of the sources, as we said lah, one of the sources of background radiation, as we saw before, is from rocks and soil, because sometimes that's the best way that we can you know manage radioactive substances. So we bury deep underground. Yes, it does cause a little bit of radiation, but by the time it reaches us, it won't be that harmful lah. Because we have the ability to regenerate our tissue cells. Okay, and then uh, the highest level. Oh, sorry. Oh, I guess we're not talking about the highest level. Uh, this is the last part. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so knowing, uh, okay, knowing how it is important, knowing the importance uh, of managing our radioactive substances, and knowing uh, that everywhere, okay, everywhere that everyone does uh, nuclear power plants, uh, they actually have steps that they take okay, to manage radioactive substances. Lah. Okay, the question that I posed earlier lah, okay, should be something uh, that is always interesting to consider, should be always interesting to debate on. Lah. Okay, 
do you do you la, do you support uh, the use of uh, nuclear power plants uh, in our country you know if so why if no why not okay there is no right or wrong answer to this la. our country okay as i said before our country our stand is we don't support the use of nuclear power plants okay for all the reasons that our prime min our previous prime minister uh, has said la. okay but you know, personally to you, like, if you were given a choice, if you are our country's leader, like, you know, would you uh would you support or would you would you you know advocate like, the use of nuclear power plants in our country or not? Okay, because you know uh education about nuclear education about nuclear technology uh, is actually very important. Okay, if anything uh, that Einstein has taught us like, uh is that actually uh the use of nuclear uh, materials lah, okay the use of radioactive materials is actually very beneficial okay the only thing is uh that uh, the only thing is sometimes it can be misused okay but with the uh, with the correct handling lah, okay with proper management lah, it is actually very beneficial uh to mankind lah. okay so uh, good question to think about as we end chapter five okay now that you know all that is to know about the basics of uh, radioactivity. Yeah? Okay, would you support uh, the use of uh, nuclear power plants in our country or not? Okay, so that's something uh, for us to think about. Uh, you know, uh, even as we end this chapter. Lah. Okay, so uh, thanks to everyone who is involved. Uh, I am not done with the class yet. Nah. Thanks to any, everyone who is involved uh, today. Okay, uh, once again, nah, uh, Jeremy. Uh, Nigel and Harris, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, guys, your face is here. Okay, so thanks uh, for being involved today. Um, I hope that this has been uh, helpful, okay, uh, to all of you. But now, what I am going to show you, uh, and whether you're from 5S1 or 5S2, this, this thing applies to, uh, to all of you. Uh. Okay, first of all, oh, sorry. Okay, first of all, uh you have an assignment okay uh, i have posted up this assignment i've just posted up this assignment okay this is the 5.4 which is this subtopic uh, radioactivity module okay i want you to do the same thing that you did last time either you copy down everything the question and answer or you print out the module and you write your answers there okay and then after that uh you will need to show me a video of your completed work but this one the due date for this assignment, I will give you in a while. Okay, it can be next week, it can be tomorrow. I will let you know in a while. Lah. Okay, but selagi saya belum bagi tahu, selagi itulah, there's no due date for this assignment. Okay, but if you all know me very well, and I think that you all do, you will know that I will want to see this as soon as possible. Lah. So I would suggest that uh, uh, take this time. If you have, uh, you know, a lot of spare time, start doing a little bit by little bit. Okay, there's not that many stuff, but uh, just some extra information over there and also some practice uh, to calculate uh, to that involves the calculation okay, of uh, nuclear design. Uh, secondly, I will post up the... Let me see. Ah, yeah, here we are. Okay, so this is the, the PowerPoint that I just showed you just now, okay, that I used today. Okay, it, it's posted up in the Google Classroom already. Yeah. So you can download this PowerPoint uh, to use if you want to read extra stuff. Uh, some of the answers for your assignment are also found in here. Lah. Okay, after this, I will post up a video uh, talking about uh, the two types of uh, the two types of uh, fuel okay, that is used uh, for radioactive uh, for Sorry, the two types of fuel that is used in a nuclear reactor. Okay, the uranium versus thorium. Okay, so uh, it will be interesting to watch the video. Okay, to take to take a look and see if uh, if it helps. Okay, I think uh, that's all for today. Uh, so let me see. Uh, is there any question from anybody? No question. Okay. If there's no question, just a reminder, uh, if you are here, please make sure that your attendance is recorded. Okay, and then uh, I will see you all in the next class. Okay, take care.